one of the things you've been talking about on your show is your allegation that government officials are aiding in pedophilia, <coughs> child trafficking, and the grooming of children, right? Well, you mean like what Jeffrey Epstein did with the Clintons? Ah! So I was going through tonight's articles, uh, and really, it's getting to the point where I think we're almost at Sodom and Gomorrah level degeneracy in our society. Uh, we're going to talk about monkeypox. We're going to talk about some of the um, dark elements of that, uh, how it's spreading in mostly the uh, sodomite community. Um and, you know, really, it's only through Christ Jesus, Lord and Savior, that I'm able to do this and read this information and y y not go crazy. You have to be spiritually anchored to be able to withstand the spiritual warfare here. Uh, it's just insane. Some of the stuff is really dark. Um, you know, that's specifically with monkeypox, but also with this. We've got breaking news with Alex Jones. Um, the jury has decided... In this show trial, this mock trial, this struggle session, um, aired publicly, that Alex Jones has to pay punitive da – well, I think they still actually may need to decide on the punitive da damages. But he has to pay thus far $4.1 million to the parents of Sandy Hook in damages. So uh, he's probably going to even have to pay more after the additional pun punitive damages – is decided, I think, tomorrow or the next few days or whatever it is. And, um, you know, it's really interesting with Alex Jones. Uh, you know, I put out a video yesterday about this, how, um, you know, the, the there's just so many inconsistencies in the trial. You know, uh, somehow that, you know, all of his text messages, two years worth of text messages was, was given to the prosecutor, the other party, and, and, he was revealed to have, uh, I guess, maybe perjured himself in some way when uh, during the deposition because of this. Uh, but also, they were kind of caught lying because the judge inferred that he wasn't complying with discovery. Uh, and, and the whole thing here is, first of all, he should at least get some sort of mistrial or be able to countersue his own lawyer. Uh, for handing over all those texts. That's something one of my subscribers brought up. It's pretty obvious. There's some sort of... <laughs> I mean, that that's a procedural like mishap that is just incalculable. It, it, it seems like there's something else going on with that. Like, how, how does that just happen? How does that just accidentally happen? I, 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 don't, I don't know. But, you know, what else is really weird that accidentally happened, I guess you could say? And wait till you see this clip I'm about to show you from an Alex Jones interview just a few days ago with Michael Malice. I was actually listening to this interview. And when I heard this, um, I was, my jaw just dropped. I'm like, wait a minute, what? And then also, one of my followers on Twitter, uh, I forget who it was. Was it Cerebral Pisces? I forget who it was. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but they dropped this link as well. So while all this is happening and Alex Jones is getting financially just destroyed, apparently, apparently financially destroyed, I bet, I bet personally he has a lot of money and he's hiding it, um, which, hey, in, in many ways, that's kind of his prerogative, I think, you know, it's how the system works, <laughs> you know, you put money in a trust and all of a sudden it's not yours, but it is like, I get it. That's how the system works. I don't even think that's even a bad thing, but like the, the whole just anomaly here is that he received like a uh, multi-million dollar Bitcoin donation that just so happened to pay for the exact amount of court fees and different types of 
payouts he had to had to get out for this whole fiasco of the Sandy Hook lawsuits. Um, and this was like a couple months ago. You see here this article. Uh, you can find it anywhere, but this is not the SPLC, which they are not our friends, the SPLC. I'm surprised they haven't uh, you know, done like an article about me yet or something. I'm glad they haven't. Um, but uh, Alex Jones' uh, Bitcoin fairy drops $8 million in a month on InfoWars. Now, uh, now, okay, $8 million in Bitcoin. Obviously, it's all anonymous. It's Bitcoin. That's a lot of money. But check this out. Apparently, according to Alex Jones, so much of this actually came from basically one donor. And it was – he even says in this clip that he thinks, oh, maybe it was the CIA. I don't know. Maybe – I remember uh, Jones saying at one time too, back in like 2012, 2013, back when I used to listen to him, that George Soros was trying to get him – to or, or a Soros affiliated group or, or one of Soros's associates, it could have been George Soros directly. I don't know, but I remember him saying something about Bitcoin, and George Soros was trying to get him to push Bitcoin, and and that always stayed in the back of my head, even though I'm sort of an advocate for Bitcoin in, in some ways. But uh, you know, there is this element uh, of it that's super shady, like you know. It, it, but, but but check this out. Check this clip out with uh, Michael Malice and, and Alex Jones, what he says here about this whole thing. I, I did get – I have to say this, though, the first time. We've never had big donors. Our biggest donation previously was like $75,000. I got $9 million in Bitcoin donations uh, three months ago from a wallet that bought it in 2016. Never sold it, never bought it, just sat there, and I got $9 million of it which by the time we cashed out about seven and a half million, which I needed for legal and backup and all my stuff. And it was crazy. Once we did the accounting, cause we were in big trouble bankrupt. Uh, that actually was the exact amount. So I don't know. Was it the CIA gave me the money? I don't know, but they knew when the, I had outside accounting firms, big Texas firm come in and I had another firm come check it and they go, this is really weird. They go, it's the exact amount you needed to pay all the bills, do all the back stuff and buy product, $2 million of product in the future. They were like, this is insane. The number to like dollars, Malice, like someone was watching or they, or they were they had a little lucky thing. Either someone is so advanced, maybe it's aliens, that they knew exactly what I needed before I knew it and gave it to me. I don't know who that is. <laughs> you know what? I, I hear the headline, Alex Jones, aliens paid my legal bills. <laughs> yeah. And guys, that's so that's pretty. Uh, I, I mean, what do you make of that? Just let me know what you make of that. Drop a comment below. Um, and you know, while you're at it, like, uh, like the video, share, and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and also, be, you can. I might as well just plug my Patreon too and my Telegram channel. Um, those things are in the description box below. If you want to contribute to the channel, I have Patreon. But also, if you want to, you know, help share information, Patreon's a great way. And then also uh, Telegram. Um, so a lot of this, this is just like, I mean, what? This guy gets, gets a Bitcoin donation of millions of dollars from an anonymous wallet that's been holding it since 2016. And, and it, it, like people like how, who would donate that much money to Alex Jones or anybody really? I mean, it's just unfathomable. It would be, have to be somebody with a lot of money, obviously, I had somebody in the Telegram chat say Elon Musk. I don't think it was Elon Musk. I don't know who it was though, and it's really, really shady. I know there's a lot of people that say there are there are a lot of libertarians and anarchists who got rich from Bitcoin. Maybe one of them is a huge Alex Jones fan, maybe or maybe it is. A C he even he postulates that it's a CIA. Okay, this guy like just admits he's uh, he he's admitted he's controlled opposition before. By the way, for those of you that don't know, and, and like I don't even necessarily see. I think he's such like uh, an overzealous guy that I think he would say that and 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 it not be true. That's that that's how that's how much you can take his word for it. Like that it's probably not even true when he says it, even though it discredits him. So I I don't know. Like, anyways, we're just gonna switch topics because. <laughs> That's just, I, I mean, I don't even know what to think about that. Like, he, he, maybe it was aliens. Maybe it was the Anunnaki, or maybe it was the Pleiadians, right, from Venus or something. 
um, the interdimensionals that are just like secretly commu- communicating with all the New Agers and telling them to uh, go get buy the crystal at the witch store down the street in Salem or something. Um, right, right, right. I'm sure those are those are the good guys. So that being said, let's talk about the monkey pox outbreak. And um, yeah, I called this. Uh, I don't know two months ago now. Um, I said, you know, this is a uh, disease primarily spread among sodomites, amongst the gays, um, you know, uh, and and I was right. And now this is admitted 95% of all cases in the United States are amongst the gays. Um, so, I mean, it's a gay disease right now. I mean, it could, it could like, spread and become, like... Uh, just the straight and gay disease uh, and spread out to the further population and with everybody being some form of non cisgender or heteronormative uh, sexuality now uh, I can see the gay community spreading out into the straight community through bisexuals and um, swinger orgies and stuff like that pretty quickly and this becoming the new um, current thing, right? And of course, the people with the Ukraine flags in their profiles will have to change it to, I don't know, like a rainbow flag with, uh, you know, uh, pimples on it or, or, you know, pox, right? Little bumps. I don't know. Um, Maybe a picture of a giant uh, phallus with bumps on it. I'm not sure. Um, But that's, you know, that might be the new thing. So get the profile pictures ready, normies. Um, you know, you, you better overlay the image of, uh, you know, pimply scrotum uh, on your on your default Facebook and Instagram profile pics. So share the rainbow square, guys. Um, Biden administration declares monkeypox a public health emergency. The Biden administration on Thursday announced it is declaring monkeypox a public health emergency, a move intended to speed up the distribution of vaccines and expand testing as the outbreak continues to spread. And by the way, with vaccines right now, from what I understand, this article might actually quote it, but I, I this is this is true. From what I understand, it's only gay men. Uh, and by the way, gays who identify as men. That's that's an interesting caveat. Uh, that are uh, qualified to get the vaccine. So, you know, they're trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, I guess ration it in some way. Those are the only people that need it at this point, right? So um, that's what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to say, well, you have to identify as a man and be gay in order to qualify to get the vaccine. And, you know, this is a huge moneymaker. I, 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 again, this, these are the things I reported on months ago, how they ordered a whole bunch of smallpox vaccines, um, months ago, months ago, I talked about it. Nobody else was talking about it. Of course, there's a couple people talking about it, I'm sure. But, um, and I said, this is going to spread. You had, you know, the nuclear threat initiative, which is like this globalist type world economic forum esque group, um, sponsored by Kissinger and others, other globalist types that, uh, literally simulated a monkeypox outbreak. Um, wrote a paper in a simulation, um, war game thing. Uh, back in, I think, 2020 or 2021 about a monkeypox outbreak occurring in the middle of 2022. I don't know. I guess they are just in tune with, you know, those Anunnaki that donated Bitcoin to Alex Jones and they just know the future, right? They're looking into their crystal ball of, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever, right? So um, pro- project, what do, they, what do they call it? Uh, the project uh, uh, looking glass, right? <laughs> so... This is, uh, you know, it's spreading. So, uh, quote, we're prepared to take our response to the next level in addressing this virus. The Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Xavier Becerra told reporters, and we urge every American to take monkeypox seriously and to take responsibility to help tackle the virus. A decision memo created by HHS has circulated through U.S. health agencies over the past week and has secured broad support from heads. Um... Yada, yada, yada. So you, you got all this. Right now, um, uh, more than 1,200 cases have been reported in the last three days alone. And monkeypox uh, infections have totaled 6,600 since its first um, uh, case here in the U.S. Um, in the past few weeks. So, you know, it's aggressively um, 
spread, right? I think it's grown, what, 30% in the past couple days or something like that. So it's um, it's one of those things that's rapidly becoming more and more of a uh, issue. And you're seeing this a lot, how uh, much like how COVID played out. Um, of course, the shock factor is a little less because we've already gone through like a pandemic. So people are like, oh, here we go again. They're not as freaked out maybe, although the people, I'm sure that many people are still freaked out, especially these normies wearing their facial diaper apparatuses everywhere they go. Um, you know, now they're going to be wearing gloves because this is spread with skin to skin contact, not respiratorily. Um, so, you know, I guess also, it, unlike COVID, um, which this was being re- remember when this was being reported that you get needed to spray down like your Amazon packages with whatever Lysol whatever it was you know anti disinfectant um, or disinfectant before taking it into your home because it was thought that COVID spread on surfaces when it didn't um, and that came out later on people were wearing gloves at the grocery <laughs> store and everything oh man. And so um, I actually this is, I actually have a funny story about that, but I don't have time to tell it. But so now uh, this actually is, I guess, a risk. Uh, you know that this could spread on surfaces and and not respiratorily. So it's not even the mask. Now it's going to be the glove. That's going to be the sign of compliance, right? Um, possibly. So now. Listen to listen to this. Look at this article from the Washington Post, which I'm pretty sure they have a paywall, so I won't be able to actually read most of it. But this is a major theme in the media right now. Um, sex is a dr- uh, major driver of the global global monkeypox outbreak, but health officials and longtime HIV activists say calls for abstinence don't work. Really, so. You know, it's okay for you to uh, uh, try to lock down the entire planet, to lock people in their homes, to cover their faces, you know, cover two-year-olds' faces, to force inoculate them, to fire them from their jobs, to close their businesses, to do all of these things for two years straight. That's okay. That's warranted. But... To say that the gays need to stop going to orgies for a couple of weeks to slow the spread, that is uncalled for and unnecessary. Here's why this is. It's because sodomy is America's highest value. So these protected classes of um, degenerates uh, going to orgies and spreading their bodily fluids... Um, these are looked at as sort of like un, untouchable, almost godlike creatures that you can't say anything bad about. You can't po- even politely request, by the way, that they stop going to gay orgies and um, you know engaging in sodomy for literally two weeks. 15 days to slow the spread, to flatten the curve. Can we flatten the curve here? Can we just stop going to the gay orgies for just, just for a minute? Like seriously, um, but no, I guess that's just not allowed, right? That is not allowed to even uh, talk about. Um, and health officials, the experts, say abstinence will not work, even though this is a global monkeypox outbreak with, uh, with 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 the gay people. This is being spread at gay orgies, right? <sighs> I'm just so done with the hypocrisy. I'm so done with the uh, double standards. I'm so done with uh, the um, the groveling to, to 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 people just because of what they do in the bedroom, right? Like we need to now um, worship them as gods. Just and we can't even request that they stop doing their gay orgies. We we're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to request that uh, to slow the spread, right? And then this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of thing that just makes you sick to your stomach. And I, I, I'm just going to read the article. That's all I'm going to do. Is that a Western Journal? Uh, very well-known uh, case here. First, children in the U.S. test positive for monkeypox. CDC chief says both had contact with gay men. Two children in the U.S., a toddler 
in California and a non-resident infant in Washington, D.C. have been diagnosed with monkeypox, according to new news reports. Officials from the CDC uh, announced the cases on Friday. According to Axios, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky broke the news during, during a virtual event with the Washington Post. Both children had been in contact with, quote, individuals who come from men who have sex with men community. The gay men's community. Walensky said, according to Axios. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. And this is uh, here from Libs of TikTok. This is at a Pride event in PA featuring a stripper pole where they taught kids how to pole dance. And again... Um, uh, this is a gay pride event and they're teaching kids how to pole, pole dance. This looks like maybe a, a, an eight-year-old kid. I don't know, I'm kind of bad at telling age ages with, with anyone under like 13. You know, to me, they all look the same. Um, they, the kid's probably like nine or something. But like, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I'm talking about. It's just, um... I th- I think we're in for for a total collapse of this civilization. Like like we we really are in for something bad. Uh, judgment will occur, I think. You know, and um, this is not looking good. This is not looking good for America. Um, so yeah, and it's really fitting, by the way. And I've said this before that you know they call them pride events. Pride being the most notable and um, fallen and disastrous sin of all the deadly sins. Um, It was the sin that separated Lucifer from God, from, uh, you know, God's army of angels. It was the pride of the devil that made him evil and caused him um, to fall and be the enemy of God. So it is the greatest sin. It is the most egregious sin. And they call these events um, pride events. They're not even called gay pride events anymore. They're called pride events. And it's very biblical that it's almost like, it's almost like the world is a, is a clown world walking, talking, inverted parody of itself um, in the eyes of God. Uh, it's almost, it's just unbelievably noteworthy and it's, it's mind blowing. And it's like, you can see the spiritual war warfare. It's like, whoa, this is from two years ago, but it's worth showing. Uh, governor Gavin Newsom signs bill reducing penalties for sodomy with minors. Um, you guys remember this from two years ago, this is September, 2020. That's just the, that's, I'll just leave it there. No commentary needed. Um, now, this is going on with DeSantis, and this is actually really interesting, okay? DeSantis suspends Florida prosecutor for indicating he would not enforce restrictions on abortion, gender therapy. And this is the exact stance that I think conservatives need to take. I don't even want to call them conservatives. Normal people uh, need to take, um, especially the politicians here. You like, the problem with... So many of uh, P, uh, you know these GOP types and these neocon types and even regular conservatives is they just don't do anything and they don't take an offensive stance and they're not willing to have the cojones to actually fire people to actually um, make offensive moves in in, in uh, passing legislation like instead of just trying to stop what the left is doing and block things. Uh, why don't we try to aggressively, you know, get more Second Amendment rights and get more First Amendment rights and get even more um, rights when it comes to the Fourth Amendment and, you know, your right to privacy and, you know, illegal search and seizure and all that stuff. Um, and why not, you know, uh, in certain communities, I think it would be fitting to, uh, you know, pass legislation that uh, – Kids uh, have to learn about the Christian perspective, um, you know things like that. Um, we got to become a little more 
uh, aggressive in our stance, right? Instead of being defensive and saying, whoa, slow down there, Democrats. <laughs> whoa, slow down there. Because for the past like 100 years, that's all it's been. That's all it's been. That's it. But DeSantis is making moves um, in, in an aggressive way, and that's a good thing. Um, he, he fired one of the Florida prosecutors, and this prosecutor put in writing um, that they would not enforce the, this law that was passed that uh, basically prohibits child sex gender reassignment surgery and prevents abortion. So I'll read the article. Um, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suspended the top county prosecutor from Tampa on Thursday after the Democrat publicly said he wouldn't enforce a new state abortion restriction or a potential law banning surgeries for transgender children. You know, it starts off, and this is the thing with the LGBT thing. Remember back in the 2000s, I remember because I was in high school and I was very, very pro like gay marriage um, for the most part. I mean, I didn't really care about politics, but I guess if you were to ask me, I was, right? So, um, and a lot of the um, conservative talking points at the time were like, yeah, if you allow this and, you know, you open the door for marriage to be defined as, uh, you know, a man marrying his goat. And then you'll open the door for, uh, you know, uh, transgender, uh, you know, being uh, being married. And then that opens the door into the transgender world. And then who knows? They're going to be teaching and brainwashing your kids with this stuff. And pretty soon your kid will be trying to get, you know, a sex change operation and cut off their, you know, what, you know, or um, get a mastectomy and cut off their breasts, you know. Uh, at age 12 and everybody was like come on even I remember I was like yeah I don't, I don't know about that you know it was 2008 right and you know you were like yeah right that's not gonna happen look they just let the gays get married okay like yeah it'll stop there it'll stop there but no those crazy uh, Christian conservatives were right and uh, here we are not even eight years later Eight years. I think gay marriage was codified in like 2014 or at least that was what the Supreme Court decision. I don't even know what it was, but it, it was like 2014 or so that this was uh, allowed. And now here we are. Florida Governor DeSantis suspended the top uh, prosecutor from Tampa after they publicly said they wouldn't enforce a new state abortion restriction or potential law banning surgeries for transgender children flanked by state and area law enforcement uh, officials who are a fellow Republicans. Uh, DeSantis at his news conference that um, Hillsborough County State Attorney Andrew Warren was neglecting his officials official duties and was essentially usurping the veto power of a governor by signal signaling his refusal to prosecute those who break laws in which he disagrees when you f flagrantly violate your oath of office when you make yourself above the law you have violated your duty DeSantis said you have neglected your duty and you are displaying a lack of comp competence uh, to be able to perform those duties Warren who has become a, a face of the uh, progressive criminal justice reform after he first won office in 2016 and had considered re uh, running for Florida Attorney General in 2022 accused DeSantis of political posturing, su suggesting that the governor was motivated by his re-election campaign and his potential 2024 White House bid. Quote, today's political stunt is an illegal overreach that continues a dangerous pattern by Ron DeSantis uh, of using his office to further his own political ambition. Um, Warren said in a written statement accusing DeSantis of overriding the will of the voters who are elected in prosecutor, the people who have the right to elect their own leaders, not uh, have them dictated by an aspiring presidential candidate who has shown time and time again he, he feels accountable to no one. And that's one of the keys here that he put it in writing that he was going to ignore the law that the Florida legislature has passed that DeSantis signed into law. He was going to outright ignore it. And, and, and the, this is on an issue of of transgender surgery for for kids i mean like an abortion you know it's like you know this isn't like a simple like 
uh, <laughs> benign, you know, thing where it's like, oh, look, I'm not, I'm not going to throw people that are carrying a half ounce of marijuana in jail, okay? Okay, DeSantis, even if you sign it into law, I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. This is, um, this is like evil, right? What, what, what he's saying. He's saying that he's going to commit evil. He's going to allow evil to um, flourish, and he believes in that. Um, and he put it in writing. And so DeSantis said, well, you know, you're going against the law that was just passed, so you're out of here. Um, so yada, yada, yada. And by the way, um, the, the article goes on here. The high-profile political dynamics were telegraphed a day earlier by DeSantis's, uh press secretary, Christina Pershaw, who hyped the coming announcement on social media. The governor's office also issued a statement to conservative media calling Warren, Warren a Soros-backed prosecutor, uh, a reference to progressive financier George Soros, whom Warren, who, whom Warren in 2020 acknowledged may have helped his first successful election campaign four years before. Wow. So uh, this is a Soros prosecutor. Um, you know, it's really interesting here. Soros somewhat responded to this and other instances as well because i think in san francisco there was a prosecutor that was just um kicked out um for not enforcing the law and now desantis is firing this prosecutor for not enforcing the law and uh soros came out and said this quote i have no intention of stopping in regards to him funding and continuing to fund his um um satanic prosecutors that he's trying to put into the, the DA's offices across the country. Um, so, yeah, DeSantis fired this Soros-backed prosecutor, straight up said, you're out of here, and it's in regards to abortion and transgender surgery for kids. So, wow, pretty based. And the fact that Soros is responding to this stuff, this is like a globalist New World Order drama. You know, this is like a soap opera of the of of the United States civil war against the globalist elite satanic scum. Now, off to the CDC or CDC, CD, CBDC, CBDC um, information here. This is, whoa, okay, this is crazy. Uh, the Bank of in- England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming digital cash would be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible boom okay this is the bank of england right here in the good old west saying this a couple weeks back cbdc's are the enemy of the people look what they're doing in china that's the prototype that's the beta test of what they want to roll out in the UK and then eventually across Europe and here in the United States, a CBDC in which the US dollar is programmable in only digital. Cash will be banned. They're already banning cash in um, in Israel and other countries as well. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and... Uh, it says here, quote, digital cash would be pro- uh, programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. Okay? And this is from the Bank of England, guys. This is from the Bank of England. Uh, here we go. In the article, the Bank of England has called on ministers to decide whether a central bank digital currency should be programmable, ultimately giving the issuer control over how it is spent by the recipient. So imagine that you're going to the to the store and you know you want to buy some you know smokes or something and you're not allowed to because uh, there's a monkeypox out, outbreak and there's now supply chain shortages and um, you know you know you're only allowed to buy certain things because they need to ration everything they need to ration I don't know you know paper or something so you can't buy <laughs> you know your smokes not that you should be buying smokes anyway but you know you get where I'm, where I'm going with that so it's kind of like if there's shortages, which there are and there will continue to be, and it's only going to get worse and worse, 
um, you know, they'll be able to ration and uh, say that you can only spend certain t uh, amounts of money on certain goods and, you know, program your, your currency to be like that. So you swipe the card or let's say by, by then you have a tattoo in your hand or on your forehead to, to try to buy anything, um, go figure. And it doesn't work. So sorry, you're at your limit for the month when it comes to how much beef you can eat. You know, you can only eat this much ground beef per month. Sorry. Oh, and steaks only once a year. That's only on your birthday. Remember that video I always share? I got to reshare that because I feel like I got to do a video on that once a year because it's so apt. I'm talking about the, um, the, uh, the city of the future from Forum of the Future. It's like a video from like 2008. It might have been 2011 or so, 2010, something like that, um, where it's like a cartoon that depicts like a, a hypothetical New World Order, Great Reset Society that is being pushed right now. It's like to a T, you know, where there's a limit on how much meat you can eat. Everybody rides a bicycle. No one has a car, um, you know. They keep track of just about everything. There's quote unquote freedom ghettos of people who don't want to go along with the smart cities. Everybody's crammed into mega cities. It's a hellhole. Yeah. Um, and it's like presented as a good thing. And it's like promoted by, by form of the future, which is like a W E F affiliated group. Um, Tom Mutton. A director of the Bank of England said during a conference on Monday that programming could become a key feature of any future central bank digital currency in which the money would be programmed to be released only when something happened. He said you could introduce programmability. What happens if one of the participants in a transaction puts a restriction on the future use of money? Uh, question mark <laughs> there could be some uh, socially beneficial outcomes from that preventing activity which is seen to be socially harmful in some way oh preventing activity which is seen to be socially harmful in some way just think about the endless possibilities with that just think about it right like um, if you're deemed um, uh, a bad guy because you have controversial opinions like I don't know Alex Jones or something and, uh, you know, all of a sudden they shut off your uh, your account. You know, they say unless you come out and apologize for this tweet you, you, you put out in 2021, um, well, then you will uh, not be able to buy food for your family. Right. So it'll all be programmed. And then as soon as you apologize, blink, uh, your you know, your your currency is now uh, reprogrammed to be able to be used again. So it's it's like that. Right. Um, and they'll be able to just do whatever they want, right? It just gives them carte blanche to just use it for unlimited power. I mean, it's just unspeakable as uh, how, how, how much this can be used for. Um, uh, he warned that the government would be required to intervene and make the final decision. Oh, thank, thank the Lord. The government will be required to make the final decision. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, God forbid that, that it's like a corporation doing it. It's like, what's the difference, right? Um, so Mr. Mutton said, this is a really delicate debate that needs to be had. It is not something we can settle ourselves. It is for the government to lead on. Mm. One potential use could be control over benefits payments. Oh, look at that. Um, so we're talking EBD, EBT cards and stuff like that, uh, that can be used only to buy food. Um, it's like, well, they already have that. It's called an EBT card anyway. So, you know, it's just, it's just another system of control. They're trying to roll, roll out. They already have it in China. They could also program expiration dates to encourage people to sp uh, spend quicker, right? So whatever you get paid, you have to spend by the end of the month. Um, let's say it's your wage, uh, that way it will stimulate the economy, right? So it's about a managerial economy. In Israel, they are already rolling this out almost fully at this point. Israel's always a great beta test, uh, much like China, that they uh, use, a, a country they use to roll out their systems first. We saw that with the vaccine passport as well. Israel, uh, the end of cash from August 1st, cash and check transactions above 
uh, 6,000 shekels will be illegal. This is the equivalent of about 1485, I think that's British pounds, and it's the equivalent of about 1,700, 1,800 US dollars. So you're not allowed to carry more than $1,700 worth, $1,800 worth of shekels. Um, and if you are, you'll face significant fines in Israel. The end of cash, and that's what they have. They have the digital currency there. Cash transactions above 6,000 shekels. Illegal. And it says those found um, can be hit with fines or even jailed. Jailed. Imagine that. Jailed for carrying your own money. Jailed. And this is uh, something from the federalreserve.gov. I believe I've talked about this before recently. This is actually came out in January 2022. Money and payments to the U.S. dollar and the digital transformational age. And they talk about CBDCs in here, the U.S. dollar being turned into a CBDC. So they're floating this idea. This is directly from the federalreserve.gov slash publication slash file slash money and payments. Central bank digital currency, uses and functions of a CBDC, potential benefits of a CBDC, potential risks and policy considerations for a CBDC. I'm not going to read the whole document, but, you know, they go on to discuss this and talk about it at length. January 2022, it's coming. It's coming. If you look up the Hamilton Project, MIT is working on this along with the Federal Reserve. Um... And this is what they want here in the United States, a programmable, highly controlled digital currency and the abolition of all cash. And it will be highly controlled. And then we have the Inflation Reduction Act, which is set to, of course, do the exact opposite of what they claim it's going to do. Um, They even admit it's actually going to increase inflation a little bit. Uh, for a couple of years, then it will reduce inflation. So this is what the uh, Congress and Senate and um, um, our legislature are debating on um, passing and has a bunch of climate change stuff shoved in there as well, spending. Uh, They're going to increase taxes. Of course, Joe Biden said in his um, campaign that no new taxes for anybody making under 400000 a year. This Inflation Reduction Act Totally breaks that promise. Nobody bats an eye. No one knows. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, And Biden's obviously, uh, this is one of his pet projects. His, I should say his handlers. um, Projects um, just goes against his campaign promise. Obviously, it's going to actually reduce inflation. But it's in the works. So until it's actually passed, um, you know, I'll probably do a deeper dive on it when it's actually passed because uh, right now they could shove a bunch of new stuff in there. But a lot of it has to do with climate change and carbon emissions and a lot of it has to do with raising your taxes and reducing inflation, quote unquote. But they actually admit it's going to raise inflation and then reduce it. So I, the whole thing is just double speak. Um, and of course, the destruction of the dollar will bring about the CBDC. You know, that could be the plan. I don't know. Um, the CBDC here in the U.S., the Federal Reserve, it seems like they're caught in their, the balls of their feet a little bit. They're not really um, fully prepared yet to roll it out. So I think it will be a few years. If you read this document from the Federal Reserve, you could you could tell this is really in the beginning stages. Um, but, you know, things roll quickly nowadays. You know, it could be a couple years before they finally roll this out. Could be like five, ten years, though. Um, so, but, you know, we're lo- watching the slow collapse of the U.S. economy, the slow collapse of the dollar. Things are going to get worse. Supply chain shortages. Be ready. Be prepared. Have storable foods. Get involved with your local community, with people that are like-minded. Maybe you can do it th- through the Telegram chat or in the comment section below, even. Um And uh, just be ready. Be ready to go. Let's do this. We got this, boys. We got this. Have your gold and your silver, too. You know, I think crypto is a good hedge, too. 
um, because it's good, for, you know, to protect against inflation. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is just the, how I approach it. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Like I said, like, share, and subscribe. Share this video far and wide. Uh, follow me on BitChute and Odyssey and Rumble, too, the alternative platforms in case this one gets shut down here on YouTube. Join the Telegram group and follow me on Gab and Twitter as well. All the links for that in the description box below. And if you want to support my work, I have a Patreon in the description below. You can become a Patreon member and um, participate more fully in the live shows once I, I clear my hard drive out because <laughs> my computer freezes every time I do a live show right now, You guys, you guys have seen. So I got to like fix things up a little bit, then I'll be back doing live again. Um, so I just got to pre-record everything. But that being said, it's been press. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.